Good morning, Bismarck, Mandan. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. You're listening to United Way's Community Talk. Joining me in studio are two of my favorite people in the entire universe. We have our operations manager, Amber Rosiska. Good morning, everyone. And we have new to our team. Uh, we're christening you in this radio experience, Amanda Schweeters. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, Amanda, you're our new marketing manager, and you're just tearing things up at United Way. So we appreciate you <laughs> joining our team. And I was just actually over at the chamber this morning at your old home where we proudly stole you from and uh, talking with their local issues committee. The room was packed. Oh, I bet. Is it always packed? I believe so. There's a lot of local issues going on. God, I mean, no, really. Is it always that packed? Do you know? I actually don't attend the local issue meeting, so huh. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was fascinating. A lot of really good people there. But we were talking about the homelessness issue, which we will get into further in the show. Um, we have Mark Heinert coming to us. He, God, he's been... He and Melanie Heidkamp have been a blessing, really, in this whole process and being able to rely on them and their expertise. So we'll be talking with Mark Heiner from YouthWorks. He's also a member of the Homeless Coalition, as am I, uh, and just talking through some of these um, problem-solving things that we're going through in our community. But before we do that, um, Amanda, we just want to talk with you a little bit. How do you? How are things different at United Way than the Chamber? <laughs> and I know you're really new. And it's been we've been kind of thrown for a little bit of a loop here uh, providing a lot of direct services, which we typically don't do. But if no one else is able to do them, we don't want people out in the cold. So it's been not exactly normal operations, shall we say, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a new normal for me, though. <laughs> I don't know any different. But no, things have been going great. Um, there's a lot of similar aspects as in events. Um, we wrapped up two events last week, and so that I'm very familiar with in the chamber world. Um, but there's a lot of new things um, with the marketing realm that I'm getting used to. But I love it. I love the change. I'm glad to be a part of the organization and I, I think whatever comes my direction, I'm excited, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> expected and unexpected. Well, I don't think any of us really could have seen what has come our direction lately. I, and I, I joke, but it's really not a joke that we've become Grand Station for the homeless in our community. And we have seen firsthand mm -hmm. people who really need our help. And I just have to commend you and Amanda and Madison. I mean, we have such a small team. Mm -hmm. We have such a small team. We're not this huge workforce in the community. Um, but for example, I, before I, on my way here, I got a call from uh, West Central, West Central Human Services. There's a woman, a client staying at Ruth Myers, and um, she is in need of medications. She has no medications, and they're life-threatening medications uh, for seizures. Mm -hmm. And so West Central said, well, can we help? And I said, well, I mean, really, we, we don't have the funding for any of this right now. Um, and we're really trying to address just people living on the streets and the urgent crisis that we're seeing. Uh, but if it's life threatening, yes, we will help. Right. I said, I'm going to leave it up to you, Melissa. If you think this is a crisis, uh, use your best judgment. So mm -hmm. I pulled Mary aside on my way out the door. Mary is our part time admin. And I said, will you please meet this individual at the pharmacy mm -hmm. and gave her my credit card. And I mean, that's kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. And so that I just have to say thank you to the team for stepping up and filling that role, even though we... We aren't even quite sure yet what that need is, and it's changing. It's constantly evolving every single day. Mm -hmm. So thanks for being so flexible. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but isn't it fascinating hearing people's stories? It is. It's very eye-opening. What are I mean? In have you ever worked in direct service before? Um, no, I haven't. Because you've traveled quite a bit yeah. in your life. I've done a lot of traveling, and I've tried to immerse myself in the locals communities when I'm traveling, but I think it's a completely different situation, especially when it's within your community. I think it's a really, just really eye-opening, and you don't realize the impact or what's going on in your community until they are walking in your front door. <laughs> Literally, at our doorstep. Yeah, I agree. Amber, this is, you no, know, you've been with United Way for a number of years, so how are you holding up? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I was gonna, one thing I was going to say when I started at United Way, I think until you really get involved in the agencies and the work that United Way does, you don't really truly know what the issues are in your community. You may think you have a good grasp on that there's kids in our community that don't go, you know, that go hungry on the weekends or there's people living on the streets, but you really don't truly have a great understanding until you get involved. And so I would encourage everybody, especially now, we need people more than ever to step up, raise their hand and, and say that they're willing to help. But yeah, this has definitely been new for our office. Not that we haven't been involved. We've always been around the table with the Homeless Coalition, but this is kind of a, a big step in saying, hey, we will raise our hand as an organization and do what we need to do. Well, and we're just grateful for people like Mark Heiner, who just logged into our studio. Hi, Mark. <laughs> uh, and Melanie Heidkamp at YouthWorks, uh, who are the experts in the field. And Dan Zanhofsky and Michelle Erickson over at Abuse Adult Resource Center. I just, I feel like the collaboration is is inspiring to me, you know, that we all care about people and we want to do what's right. And I had the business community raising their hand and saying, how can we help? Mm -hmm. So as soon as we get a moment, we're going to have, Amanda, you're going to create a little flyer. Can you write this down? <laughs> I'm writing right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and be able to communicate out to the community what is the best way for them to help. If they do have donations, we decided uh, at the coalition meeting yesterday, you can drop them off at the banquet. They're um, open Tuesdays and Thursdays. 5.30 to 7. That's right at Trinity Lutheran or at Minister on the Margins, which is right on 24th Street, east of, you know, east side of town. Um, and so any types of donations that we're looking for, we're really, I mean, winter coats, hats, gloves of all sizes. You know, in United Way's effort, we're not just housing the homeless men. We have a lot of single women that we've been helping uh, that we don't talk about enough mm -hmm. and, and what their needs are. And um, we also have a family right now, and we've had other families. We have a, a grandmother with a 15-year-old and a 2-year-old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working very closely uh, with law enforcement, <laughs> social services, manned in public schools. I mean, it takes a team to pull together and figure out, okay, how are we going to help this family get out of their homelessness. Uh, so Amanda, real quick, before we go on break, talk to us about community conversations and a great event that you held last week. Yeah, so we had um, a quarterly event called Community Conversation last week, Thursday, and it was a great turnout. Um, we had Tamra Uselman, the superintendent with Bismarck Public Schools, uh, speak to about 20, 25 individuals on the school to prison pipeline um, topic that she's been doing uh, a th her thesis, thesis for on. Dexter. So she did a wonderful job presenting that, and it brought up a lot of conversation afterwards on just multiple things, um, down to the uh, police department and. Yeah, Chief with Donlin attended. It was an event mostly for our, our major donors and best volunteers. Mm -hmm. And it's an educational opportunity for them to see an in inside glimpse into our community. Um, and, and also be able to ask questions to some of the experts who are leading some of these important yeah. programs in our schools. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. You did a great job. All right. Um, thanks, Amanda Schweders. You're going to be sticking around, right? I will. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be back in just a couple minutes. We're going to be talking with Mark Heiner from YouthWorks. Not just about YouthWorks, but about the issue of homelessness in Bismarck Mandan today. Currently 39 degrees. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area Wide United Way. It will be Christmas time soon in the city, so if you want to get involved and buy some presents for some people who are struggling out in our community, contact United Way. We have gift tags for you, names, genders, ages. Um, of people in need, kids in need. We're packing and delivering over 960 bags full of food over the weekends. And so we want to make sure all of those kids have a great Christmas. Last year, we collected and distributed 1,700 presents. Unbelievable. Uh, so if, if you want to be a part of it, call our office at 255-3601. And if Ms. Amber Jensen-Raziska has not... Uh, 
had her baby yet, she'll be there to help you. That's right. <laughs> Actually, the point purse is, is Amanda Schrader's, but she's not near a microphone right now. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. Contact Amanda at United Way and she will get you hooked up. Uh, so, okay, this is Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week. Uh, and we... We are really blessed to not just have in studio, but in our community, someone who I admire, someone who really walks the walk, someone who is the best advocate for people in need in our community. And I say that sincerely, Mark Heiner from YouthWorks, you are just an awesome beacon in our community. Well, I think this interview could be done. That's the one yeah. of the best interviews I've ever had. <laughs> uh, Makes I'm good not to be kidding, here. Mark. I love the philosophy that starts right at the top with Melanie Heidkamp at your organization. The culture, how you embrace people in need, how you don't have any judgment, how you help them to achieve their goals. You're just awesome. Appreciate hearing that. We really have, we've, we actually are hitting, uh, we hit 30 years as an organization. Uh, when? We've been around. And um, it has been all of those years that we have embraced positive youth development. Yeah. And making sure that we're taking a look at building on young people's strengths yep. and figuring out how we can help young people with some of the adversities that they're, that they're facing. And so actually that's, that's been a part of the philosophy uh, as long as there's been an agency of youth mm. works. That is cool. So for listeners out there that don't know, tell us what YouthWorks is and yeah. does. We are a nonprofit, um, 501c3, so we are an organization that is local. Uh, we do have an office also in the Fargo area, um, but it's just those two locations in Bismarck and in Fargo. We provide services to runaway homeless youth or youth that are at risk of that. Um, so primarily we're looking at individuals and their families that are teens, and we're providing a variety of services. We have an emergency shelter for runaway kids, uh, the only shelter of its kind in the state of North Dakota. Um, we also provide transitional housing for homeless young adults, and that'll tie in really well to the uh, Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week events. But we have a lot of complimentary services that probably don't get as much attention. Um, we're providing family counseling, we're providing after school programming, we do um, a variety of recreational uh, support groups and other things that kind of uh, look at the young person and their family. Um, a good example of that actually is we have a diversion program that works with young people who might have gotten into a little bit of trouble with the law, but not too serious that they need to be removed from the home. And so that's part of our goal. Mm -hmm. is to intervene and to provide some services for the family to help keep that young person in the home um, and away from the system for not only the right reasons for the young person, but to be honest with you, it's the most cost-effective way to do it, too. No kidding. Um, over 85% of the young people that we serve that are coming to us from that court system were able to keep out wow. of that further involvement, out of home placements. You know what I love, too, is that you are so good at tracking your success, so your numbers are real, they're quantifiable, you're able to project the need. And that's really important to donors like United Way and other investors. Yeah, and we're finding, you know, that's, it's good. It's, it is really good. It's really good that we are held to that. One of our challenges is it's demanding to be able to actually track that, um, all this, you know, the statistics of it and the, and the facts that need to be done to justify it, which frankly we need to do to be good stewards of the funds. Um, but it's also, it presents a challenge too, because we're trying to find out how we can put the most time into our clients, but yet um, provide the extra work that requires to justify that. Yeah, exactly. So I have a question for you. And this came up at the Chamber Local Issues uh, Committee this morning. How is the runaway homeless shelter that YouthWorks offers for Bismarck Mandan? And you serve kids outside of Bismarck Mandan, too. Um, Correct. How is it primarily funded? Oh, good question. The primary funding source is actually through a federal grant, through the Runaway and Homeless Youth Act. Um, there's complementary funding, uh, but the primary source is, is a federal grant that we've been able to receive for Many years, um, and like I mentioned at the offset, we are the only um, RHY, which is a runaway and homeless youth grantee within the state of North Dakota. Mm -hmm. uh, to simplify that, if you've seen perhaps on television or heard on the radio the, um, the national runaway switchboard, which is 1-800-RUNAWAY, our agency is the only agency in the state of North Dakota that's then interconnected to that switchboard. So if 
if there's a person in our state who's running away or is thinking of running away or someone that's just in need of help for that reason and they call on that switchboard, that switchboard gets them connected to our 24-hour crisis. <coughs> um, and so it is, it is a big partnership uh, both um, locally and then also state and nationwide. Um, occasionally we will have some individuals that might have come from much farther away and we'll provide temporary shelter with them until we can either unify or advocate for them to be in a safer place. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but United Way has supported the homeless shelter for years. Oh, yes, yeah. many years. years. Yeah, we've, we've and that's just one of the programs at YouthWorks that we support. Yeah, we we're very fortunate to receive the funds from United Way for the transitional living program, which would be the housing for young adults. Uh, we also use it to serve in a more general way. It supports some of what I described in, in terms of the at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. um, we'll use that for some of the family counseling and other services that it might not be a clean funding source for. Um, and then lastly, uh, we've got a special program that's an after-school project for some of our Native American students, high school students in the community that um, we're helping to make sure they're going to graduate high school and improve mm -hmm. their grades and have a place to belong and, and some social and recreational connections that they mm -hmm. feel good about. So paint a picture. We were talking about this earlier this morning as well, is that a lot of people, it's just lack of awareness of who it is that is in need. You know, when you're looking at a runaway youth, what does that mean? Well, first thing is they don't have a beacon on their forehead saying, I have run away from yeah. home. And many people oftentimes kind of think that there should be this um, more obvious way of seeing that. And frankly, um, if you're a student, you may not realize that some of the students in the classroom with you are experiencing some challenges at home and because we're not likely as a society. And frankly, especially uh, the German from Russia uh, dominated mm -hmm. culture within Bismarck Mandan is not necessarily wanting to talk about those personal problems or those challenges that we might be experiencing behind closed doors. So it is, I think, even more exacerbated as a, as a problem within our community. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people think, well, why aren't they in foster care? Great question. As a former child protection worker, I think I'm qualified to answer that. And the, the reality is there are some occasions when there might not be enough um, of a safety concern, but yet it's a tough situation. And so not only the child protective system, but other organizations like ours and, and, and other, other community organizations will try to provide services to maintain that young person in the home, offer parenting education or support services. Because one thing we know, um, statistically speaking, is that if, if we can keep a young person in their home and just improve the environment, it's gonna be a better outcome than if we have that child be removed from the home. Now, there are certainly times when uh, unequivocally that is the best solution and a young person needs to be removed from the home for their own safety and under those circumstances and that goes to the next step which is how do we make that environment the best that it can be. So are you seeing your numbers increase now that it's becoming winter or how are those referrals coming into YouthWorks? That's a really good question. We do see an increase usually in the fall. Um, not so much necessarily in the, in, in, in the colder weather, the winter time. But the community really sees it as a greater challenge in part because of how much harder it is to survive if you're having those challenges and it's really cold outside, mm -hmm. especially within the, the homeless service delivery. Um, in that particular program, things don't necessarily ramp up numbers wise, but they definitely ramp up in terms of the seriousness and how we are really pressed to figure out how we can make sure someone's going to have a safe place to be. And is that because kids are coming back to school and the teachers are notifying? Yeah, noti typically, it? typically it would be the fall or spring for sometimes for those reasons is that is that you'll really have it. We're going into the summer and so our school system might be more inclined to want to make sure they're getting them connected to us. Um, or conversely, they're coming back and they're kind of identifying young people that are in, in experiencing that need. We support YouthWorks 110%. How can our listeners support YouthWorks? Ah, fantastic example would, would, would be that we had ourselves a real shortage of food in our pantry. I saw that. And we put some posts on Facebook and had a really good community um, response to that and to be able to meet some of those needs. And so it starts with the basics, but um, I got to be real honest with you. We, we also need funds to be able mm -hmm. to do what we're doing. Um, yeah. YouthWorks ND um, is our website and anyone that is interested in 
offering us some assistance or donating to their local United Way because, of course, we know that the United Way has done a good job of supporting our programs. And so financially, for sure. But I would say above and beyond all of that, here's the reality. Young people need someone who is willing to believe in them. They need someone who's going to be supportive of them and not judge. Mm -hmm. And by looking the young person in the eye, instead of thinking the worst of them and looking away and judging young people before we have an opportunity to know why they're wearing the clothes they're wearing, is extremely important. By changing the culture of our community and being more accepting of people of all different backgrounds is probably one of the most successful things we could do. Hallelujah. Mark Heiner, YouthWorks, you're not able to go away. We're going to be talking more with you about all the work we've been doing for our community for the homeless. Currently 39 degrees. Here's Sean Hannity. Weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. I can't. Welcome back. You are listening to United Way's Community Talk in studio. We have a party going on here. We have Amanda Schweeter, who is a marketing manager at United Way, who's going to be co-hosting with me as soon as Amber Raziska goes on maternity leave. And so Amber's in studio. It might be your last radio session until the Bambino comes, Amber. It will be. This will week it be? will be my last week. Well. And then I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be crying more, your baby, your You're newborn right. baby, or me at United Way. <laughs> we are going to miss you, but we are also so excited for yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> You're due the 17th. I am, which what? is Friday. Holy cow. I just want, I want your water to break on air. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. Can you, you clean it up? <laughs> Jim Walsh. I already like, informed Jim of your hopes i know i've never been around that <laughs> so i i don't think i know what i i don't know what i don't know right <laughs> um but wouldn't that be thrilling it would be if something on air and then we could do a play-by-play -play. <laughs> right. why don't you this town, why don't we start forward. don't aren't you supposed to walk right. like doesn't that you induce walk up flavor? and down the hallway Just come around the <laughs> studio yeah just keep walking. Uh, okay. Some spicy foods might do it. Perhaps. Right. Try that. I'll go grab some lunch right <laughs> after this. <laughs> all right. But we are talking in all seriousness about a very serious issue. And um, we have Mark Heiner from YouthWorks uh, in studio. And we're talking about homelessness. And as you guys know out there, there's been a lot of press coverage with the men's emergency shelter closing down. And... I started the local issues uh, chamber committee just giving a brief overview of what we have in our community because many people aren't aren't aware of what emergency shelter is or isn't, what we have, what we don't have. There, it, there's lots of misinformation out there. So, Mark, let's start with YouthWorks. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, something that might surprise uh, individuals is that. Just within our agency alone, in Bismarck alone, we provided over 4,500 nights of shelter. Um, to, and that's not the runaway youth or the youth that are still under parental custody. That's the 18 to 21 year olds that are homeless. And so putting that into perspective, and it was with 44 different residents um, that we provided that. We provide to over 100 individuals other forms of support maybe before or after they're able to receive that housing services from us so right here within our community there's some pretty significant numbers that are associated with it from our agency from a community-wide perspective if that's if if that's okay if i jump there um jenna uh, our last point in time in 2016 said that there was 204 individuals that were homeless on a given night and that was i think the end of january um this last year that is at one point in time. The numbers from our homeless management information database that is shared discusses 1,900 um, that were actually identified and housed in either an emergency or a transitional housing facility within the within 2016. So we are talking about a couple. Sometimes it feels that way because you might see someone on the street or you might be up near the interstate and see someone with a sign and believe that there's just a couple individuals that might have this need. But, but we are talking about a substantial uh, portion of our population that, that's in this level of need. It, one of the issues that we see at United Way, and this has not been a new issue, it's been going on for a few years now, um, <clears throat> YouthWorks has done a remarkable job at tra tracking your data so you know who you're serving and you're able to report out on that and that helps us to know as a community 
what more do we or don't we need for that population for homeless and runaway youth? For the other metrics in our community, it's been hard to get consistent and reliable data. Uh, And so the homeless population is one of those areas that we are working on as a community and trying to manage that through the HMIS system, the Homeless Management Information System. Uh, But we're not there yet. And I think that is why uh, it's difficult for us to go out and ask for money because we don't necessarily, we haven't been able to quantify the need yet. We all know there is a need. It's a Mm -hmm. visible need. Uh, And so at United Way, that's one of our initiatives this winter is that we ourselves are going to be tracking who are we sheltering. And it's not just men, right? We, We lost our emergency men's shelter recently. Um, October 26th was the last night. Uh, But we, a couple years ago, lost our women and children's shelter as well. Right. Yeah. You know, the the thing that you're kind of pushing my brain to to think about is how can we, how can we as a community um, not only identify what those needs are, but then be in in place to meet those needs right away. Here's a good example. the Burley County Housing Authority is commissioning, commissioned, I should say, a study this summer. And they're looking at providing support, permanent supportive housing for individuals that are in pretty significant need that need affordable housing. So they're working on a project to build Edwinton Place, which many of you have heard about, which is going to be a 40-unit apartment complex. But the study revealed that 333 permanent supportive housing units are needed within our community. And so there's one example where... When we take the time to research some of these issues and we gather more facts from more places, we can really identify that need. Mm -hmm. That homeless management information system does a pretty good job of trying to identify as many that were actually sheltered, but not as good at identifying those that perhaps didn't get the service or might have received a service from someone who's not a participant in that database. What we do know is from Bismarck, and Mandan Public Schools. Uh, This last school year for Mandan Public Schools, there were 72 kids that um, were homeless at some point during the year. And then when we look at at Bismarck, it was right around 375 this last school year. What's really scary is that from the start of this current school year, Bismarck Public Schools is already in the upper 200s. And so it's indicating that there's going to be potentially double what we had last year. And it doesn't mean these families are homeless all at the same time. It could be one night. It could be multiple nights. I know right now United Way is sheltering a grandmother with a two-year-old and a 15-year-old today, tonight, last night, then, you know, since Friday, we were contacted by um, Mandan Police Department, actually, on a call and uh, coordinated shelter, coordinated with social services because they had, um, they had been involved with this family, coordinated with Mandan Public Schools to get transportation for this poor little 15-year-old mm-hmm. beautiful young lady, get her over to Mandan High School. Um, and, and so we, we do know those numbers. For single individuals and families, it's a little bit um, more gray, shall I say, but we could use this winter as an opportunity. Yeah, to, to be able to, to, to hone in on that and really identify uh, the needs that exist within this community. Yeah, so YouthWorks was a big help, big help. Well, first of all, um, just in lending your expertise, but also you and Melanie Heidkamp being around the table and trying to problem solve this emergency crisis. Uh, we're both part of the Homeless Coalition and they had agreed to take the lead in developing a solution, which is why United Way at that point didn't step up. This was a few months ago. We don't like to duplicate efforts. Uh, and we were supportive of what, what their plan was going to be. And then they needed more time. So at that point, we all put our heads together and said, okay, now what? What do we do now? <clears throat> we do not want people out on the streets now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think, you know, from my perspective, it's, a, it's really a good time to point out that it's not, it's not United Way's problem. It's not the Homeless Coalition's problem. It's not YouthWorks's problem or um, any one particular organization. To be honest with you, it's bigger than any of us anyway. And we might have expertise and, and knowledge to try to address some of these challenges, but it really does take a community 
to address the needs that that this population has. And I think it's been refreshing to see you and some of your staff, Amber, get excited about the uh, opportunities to, to meet people um, and to know a little more about the story behind the story. And, and, you know, honestly, that's just kind of another day at the office for a lot of the mm -hmm. homeless providers where it's like these are the situations we're challenged to deal with on a regular basis. The logistics of transportation, is there going to be food? Are there ap appropriate or available behavioral health services for those that are in need? Medication. Medication opportunities. Yeah. Those, those are... Um, paramount. They're really important that, that those things be included. It's not just providing a shelter for uh, so often for people. Yeah, and what I find, and this is something that we've been pushing at United Way for years, that it's not just the roof over the head, it's really that case management that is going, and it's structured case management that we need in our community. We, we need to not just perpetuate the problem. And I feel like by just putting a roof over the head, over someone's head, we're not, um, not tackling it. We're not, we're not helping them come to a solution so that mm -hmm. they aren't always homeless. Boy, I'm so biased in that in part because we're working with the young adults at YouthWorks. So we have such an opportunity. What a golden opportunity, yeah. you know, to have the opportunity to provide that education, provide case management support, get them connected with services. And when, when we're successful, those individuals don't come back to homelessness. I mean, yeah. that's some of the best rewards you can have is that someone's made it on their own and they're doing really well and they're feeling good about their success. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Mark Heiner at YouthWorks, you and your team are, are just, I can't stress enough to the community how we have a strong nonprofit sector and you're one of the leaders in it. So thank you for... for providing stable, consistent, and high quality services to homeless and runaway youth in Bismarck, Manda. Currently 44. The Jim Bohannon Show is here. Super Talk 1270. All right, thanks for joining us. You are listening to United Way's Community Talk. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the United Way. Thank you so much to Town Square Media, Super Talk 1270, and the infamous James Walsh for helping us out every other Tuesday. You can find us here uh, in studio with me are two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Uh, I love them. I practically live with them at our office. So we have our operations manager, Amber Raziska, and our marketing manager, Amanda Schweeters. Hello. Good morning, everyone. You're doing really well, Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks I'm for saying yes. When did I, did I ask you this at like 11 p.m. last night? Hey, you want to come on the radio? But really, um, it's fun, and we like to bring community issues to the community. So if you're listening out there and you do have some issues that you'd like us to discuss, uh, gosh, send us an email, a message if you want to be on. It, you know, we, we'd like to promote all of the donors. We're in the midst of our campaign, which we haven't even talked about, which is it's interesting because we have to raise $2.65 million for important programs like YouthWorks. We just had Mark Heiner on um, from YouthWorks, our homeless and runaway youth shelter. Uh, Abuse Adult Resource Center is another big program. Even the YMCA, they do phenomenal work uh, that we support. In fact, uh, a lot of people don't realize we're the sole supporter of their Parkinson's program, as well as Live Strong for cancer survivors. So there's a lot of really important needs out there in the community. So if you can give, give today. It's msaunitedway.org. A lot of people are wanting to give to the homeless situation. And so right now, United Way is that hub for collecting those donations. Uh, we haven't really promoted it too much because we want to get a plan to, to develop. We want a plan so people know exactly how their dollars are being used. However, to date, United Way is the one getting the phone calls for people that are in emergency situations. Yeah, and you know, we've mentioned this a couple times, even though the men's emergency shelter is what closed, we've been housing women, we've been housing families through this process. And in United Way, and so many people within our community have stepped up and, and just said, you know, that's not okay. And so we're raising our hand. We need other people to join us to assist with this. You know, this weekend, many of the men needed hygiene products, needed a toothbrush. And so we make a call out to our community and see who can really help us because 
we do eventually will need the funds once this plan goes into place and, and to be able to house these individuals. But sometimes it's it's hygiene products too. And so a lot can go a long ways. Well, these guys want to work. It's not just guys, but these folks want to work. They want to get out of their homeless situation. And I'm not saying every single person. I'm saying the majority. And another misperception is that people are not from North Dakota. The vast majority. In fact, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna look at the data. Uh, you know, whenever I have a second to look at the data <laughs> is when I'll look at the data. But I would say, if I were to guess, I'd say 95% of the folks that we've been housing uh, are from North Dakota. Um, so okay, so this is the thing. People are sometimes saying, you know, well, gosh, you know, anyway, why are you late to the game? <laughs> And why haven't you been planning? And I just have to say that um, we do not duplicate efforts. I think that is so incredibly important in the work that we do at United Way. So back in August, when uh, Ruth Myers announced they were closing their men's shelter, the Homeless Coalition said, we'll take the lead. And it's, it's not as simple as one might think. And so when it got down to the last night of shelter, and there wasn't a plan yet established, they needed more time, that's when United Way did step up and say, okay, we'll, we'll at least, right now we committed to the month of November. And depending on what the plan looks like, if there is a plan, it, it, it very well could be longer than that. So since the men's shelter has closed, United Way has been providing shelter to people in crisis. Uh, we do have some data on who we've been providing shelter to the last 17 days. We've had 46 people that we've provided shelter to and 150 nights of shelter. And it's been really interesting week by week by week. Um, initially, we were thinking maybe we could rent the current facility and that did not work out for various reasons. Uh, then we thought a church because, you know, back in 2012, we organized the church sheltering project. We had 16 different churches lined up, 75 volunteers trained in, in case our shelters were full, because we were being told our shelters were full. Um, and so we thought, well, let's just tap on the shoulders of those churches. And for various reasons, that did not work out. So then we've actually been communicating with the Minot shelter and the Grand Forks shelter, because Fargo Churches United is full, and there's another shelter there that their intake process was too wasn't very timely, so it didn't work out for us to be able to help people here. And you know we are not a fan of Greyhound therapy whatsoever. <laughs> That's not a best practice, and well, we recognize okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it is it is terminology, and that's what a lot of cities do. They ship ship their homeless off to the next community. Uh, it's horrible. And we are not proponents of that. But at the same time, we do not have emergency services in Bismarck, Mandan. So we want people to have a warm and a safe place. Well, and, you know, like we've mentioned, the one individual that went to Minot was originally from Minot. And so it was essentially getting him back to his home, getting him back to his family and what he knows. Yep. You know, you don't know how he got to Bismarck. Um, he's still from North Dakota and, and Minot was his home. So it was a perfect fit. And so you really just have to take these individuals that we're working with on a case by case basis and really see what works for them. I had a call from a donor this weekend who happened to meet a young lady through a gentleman that he does Bible study with. It's kind of a long, drawn-out story. But anyhow, somehow they called me <laughs> over the weekend. And so what we were able to do is talk with the client, do an intake, assess her, you know, her capacity and her resources. And she wanted to go back to her hometown in Oregon. And that's what we did as long as we felt she was safe and she had resources there. Uh, another gentleman um, was willing and able to go live with his daughter in Denver. So, so far, there are only three people that we have actually sent outside of Bismarck. Um, but we are asking if people are able to go to Minot, if they are able to go to Grand Forks. Those shelters have graciously, graciously offered to help until we can establish emergency services here in Bismarck, Mandan. What's interesting is it's not just about the shelter. Um, I was meeting with a gentleman who 
has been off his antidepressants and antipsychotics for, uh, medication for two months now. So we helped with medication the other day. Uh, we're helping to find people housing. We're sheltering them in the emergency crisis situation. So if you can give, we're going to need more money once we establish a plan. But right now, we do need funds. Uh, you can give to the homeless emergency uh, sheltering effort at msaunitedway.org. And 100% of the funds that we get will go to this effort. Um, I'm going to be giving an update to the city commission this this evening. We'll be there at 515. I guess we're at the front part of the agenda. So if you're interested in knowing more details, let us know. Um, we do, it is Homeless and Hunger Awareness Week nationwide. And so if people want to um, drop off snacks or... Um, hand warmers, socks, hygiene products. What we are asking is they drop them off either at Trinity Lutheran Church um, or at Ministry on the Margins. If you see people in need, send them to one of those two places at 530 and I will meet with them. I will do an intake and we will make sure they get housed. So Tuesday and Thursday, 5.30 at the banquet at Trinity Lutheran, right downtown on 4th. Every other day of the week, ministry margin, ministry on the margins. It's right on 24th Street at 5.30. Thanks for helping. Get in touch with us at United Way and stay tuned.